Alrighty, the third and presumably last Venom film released in the theaters a couple weeks ago. Here's my ranking of the three Venom films. Alright, before I get started, please make sure to subscribe, the like button, and hit the bell, and comment down below what is your ranking of the three Venom films. A couple things before I get started. Number one, not a fan of this franchise whatsoever. I think that the movies are a little bit, like, make you feel exhausted. They're just bad movies. At the very least, they're fun bad movies, but they're definitely not good movies. Number two, it's thunderstorming outside, so you're probably going to hear, like, boom every now and then. There'll be some lightning outside. In fact, I know it's, it's pretty messy in my room. I got socks on the floor and stuff. Probably shouldn't show you this because it's really messy, but my dog is in the floor and he is so scared to leave this room. So anyways, yeah, so it's going to do a boom. My dog's sitting right there because it, it's really bad thunderstorming outside. But we got a ranking to do again. Please make sure to subscribe, like button, hit the bell, comment below what is your ranking of the Venom films. Let's get started. Number three, I'm going with Venom. Let there be carnage. Now, again, not a huge fan of any of these films, more specifically the three and two spot on this list. But this is the movie I think is the most frustrating for me because it's the one that has all the recipes to success. I mean, you got Carnage in there, Woody Harrelson, the two actual, the actual villain that you want to see Venom fight is in there. There's still plenty of fun moments. Eddie and Venom's chemistry still off the charts here. There's plenty of stuff that make this movie enjoyable and entertaining. I just think the thing that doesn't work about this movie is because, again, number one, it feels so exhausting. Like, you watch the movie and the, mo the moment it's over, you just feel like you need a nap instantly afterwards. And along the same lines, it's the movie that also separates Venom and Eddie. So for, like, the middle chunk of the film, Venom has gone off on doing whatever he's doing. Eddie is off doing whatever he's doing. And the only reason I watch these films is for Eddie and Venom's chemistry. And so you separate the two. They're not together. What's that make it? The, it makes the movie dull. It makes the movie not as entertaining as other movies. So there's so much in this movie that I, would, that I should love. Carnage is awesome in this movie. The fight scenes are awesome. But there's so many, like, exhausting story plots. There's also so many plots, like Eddie and Venom break up, Carnage is here, a couple other side quests along the way that just don't work for me. And then also you're separating the two, which is the only amount of fun I find in the movie. So it's beyond frustrating every single time I rewatch this movie. Second place, I'm going with the original Venom movie. Now, here is a thing that... This movie I did not like first time I watched it. My mother loves these movies, so she like sat us down like a couple years after the movie came out. 2018, I was still pretty young, so she didn't want us to watch these movies because apparently they're too violent, whatever. But eventually, I did get old enough to watch this movie, and she sat down and watched it, and I just didn't like it. And then I watched it a couple more times, and each time it kind of progressively grows on me a little bit more. I find the movie to be even more entertaining than it was previously. I still don't think it's a good movie, but find this one better than Let There Be Carnage because number one, in the whole end of the film, we get Eddie and Venom's chemistry. Number two, there's a little bit more story here than that that actually makes sense. I mean, you're seeing Eddie's downfall, so like, I'd say the first act really slowly paced and actually looks like a good movie, and then the moment he gets with Venom, just kinda like, go, 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 gung-ho, pace, 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 oh, we gotta go fast, fast, fast. And I think that's what really doesn't work, but I, every time I watch this one, I think I enjoy it just a little bit more. A little bit more. I never fully think it's a good movie. I enjoy it a little bit more. I think that this one is probably the one that is going to be the most rewatchable for me because I've always rewatched it a bunch of times. My brother loves this movie. It's ridiculous. It's still exhausting. The villain Riot is crazy dumb, but it's still, it's... What I could describe is a bad movie that gets a little bit better every time I watch it. And it's just hard to describe because still I don't like this movie, but it gets even more watchable. And it's definitely more watchable than Luck to Be Carnage is. But easily in first place, I'm going with the newcomer Venom The Last Dance. I wouldn't say I love this movie. I still think it's a bad movie. This is the one out of all of them that I would go as far to say, though, I really enjoyed. I, it's a bad movie, yes. 
I really enjoyed this movie. I mean, this is the movie out of all three of them that it does not make me feel like I need a nap after watching. After watching this movie, I was like, huh, I actually feel really good because the movie's only like an hour and 45 minutes. So the pace goes by really, really quick. It's nonstop from the start to the finish. But then again, like still kind of the pacing and the 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 runtime I think really helps that one there's sequences in this movie and I think what really makes it not exhausting to me is because it's not just Venom and Eddie fighting doing all this stupid stuff it's Venom and Eddie going off on little side quests so, so like you're dancing with Mrs. Chen you're going on a road trip with um the, the one family, and what do I come to these movies for? I come to the movies for the Eddie and Venom chemistry. The only reason I go watch these movies is for the Eddie and Venom chemistry. And it's really good in this movie. I laughed quite a bit. And then when we get to the third act, there's quite a bit more substance here. There's quite a bit more stuff that I enjoyed that really was hidden from the trailers. No idea what this third act was going to be but I had a pretty good time with it. The only real problem is Noel, barely in the movie. And it's really frustrating. The movie feels like a part one of a part two adventure where Noel is the bad guy, but he doesn't even get released. It's like setting up this event that is never going to happen. And it's really frustrating when we get that aspect. And again, like the movie's runtime, there's, or not runtime, but the movie's pacing. There's so much like stupid stuff. Whole subplot about one woman and how her brother died. And literally how he died was they were holding hands. She got shocked by lightning. And it, instead of shocking her, it just conducted into him. Died and it happened in the stupidest way possible. But yeah. Not a good movie, but it is an enjoyable one. That's why it's my favorite Venom movie. And it came with this awesome Venom popcorn bucket. Alrighty, you guys, thank you for clicking on this video. Please make sure to subscribe, the like button, and hit the bell, and comment down below what is your ranking of the three Venom films. I want to know all that and more. One more video coming in the Halloween special. We got my favorite horror movie from every year I was alive. That's coming very soon. Thank you guys for clicking on this one. With a said, subscribe to the Army. Peace out.